Tao overflows. Master and disciple, the seed and flower. I gave the example master and disciple, seed and flower. Seed blossoms into flower. When it is planted, when it is planted, it is sown under the soil, it fertilizes and after a due process, it blossoms into flower. So it is the same seed that blossoms into flower. But master and disciple seems to be separate from one another. Separate from one another. So how it could be master and disciple, seed and flower? What grows into the seed? You know seed as a form. But seed has tremendous potentiality. The same potentiality that is there in the seed that blossoms into flower and the same potentiality that has now grown becomes the seed again. So between master and disciple, master is the one who has flowered, blossomed. Disciple is the seed that is yet to blossom. But what blossoms? It is the potentiality that is there in the disciple. And the same potentiality was there in the master when he has not attained flowering. So the potentiality that has grown, that has yet to grow in the disciple, exists in the form of a seed or the potentiality. In master, the same potentiality in a Buddha, the same potentiality that once existed in seed form has blossomed and attained to fruition. So there is no difference between master and disciple and this analogy, master and disciple, seed and flower is the same. Between master and disciple, much happens. But whatever happens cannot be put into the words. Cannot be put into the words. Master and disciple is intimate communion where much is communed through much is communed through silence without words. The master has blossomed, its fragrance, his beauty is overflowing. And disciple is the one who drinks the nectar that overflows. He is like the butterfly that hovers around the flower that has blossomed. It collects the pollen, it drinks the nectar from the flower, and when honeybee does that, it becomes the honey. That is how it collects the nectar, honeybee collects the nectar, the female collects, collects the nectar from the flowers and when it comes out of her womb, it is honey which has the capacity when it is consumed to increase the flow of energy within the body and also 
to increase the level of oxygen, the life force within the body. So, disciple hovers like a butterfly, collects the pollen and continues the process of fertilization, also like a honeybee that collects the nectar which is constantly overflowing, allows it to grow within her and then it, grew, it becomes a nectar. Between the two, communion happens in words as well. However, much happens as wordless communion. The two types of communion happens between master and disciple. One is through the words. So words becomes the manifestation of energy and in wordless the wordless presence wordless communion there is only energy but there is the invisible hands the invisible current flows so the purest form of energy flows, the intense flows through the wordless communion. There happens silent communion, nothing is said, nothing is asked, yet much happens. The two drink through the eyes. And when the two eyes are connected to one another, then the heartbeat, something like a quantum leap, jumps from the master and goes to the disciple. Unable to understand, the disciple thinks this is very intense. It is like a quantum leap. The process is growing through the words, through the flowing into one another through the eyes. Then all of a sudden, the life force, like a quantum leap, jumps from the master and enters into the disciple. And then the disciple finds that it is too intense out of gratitude, out of grat gratefulness, tears begin to flow to confirm that something has jumped from the master to the disciple. Nothing is said yet much happens and transformation is the fragrance of silent communion. Transformation is the fragrance of silent communion. Between this silence, through this silence flows, between this silence flows the unspoken and unheard echoes deep within. Between this silence or through this silence flows the unspoken and unheard echoes deep within. Disciple is feminine in nature. She has the womb. She has the capability to nourish the seed within her womb like a fetus. She nourishes and nurtures it within her until the explosion becomes and the, the seed has blossomed. There is a vast difference. First, there comes the journey between master and disciple begins with devotion. There is no argument or 
any kind of thing of that nature in the disciple, like a, a feminine, she trusts the Master totally. Her trust is total in the Master. No doubt of any kind arises in her. There is a difference, though, between trust and devotion. Trust is the seed of devotion. Trust is the seed for devotion to blossom. So when trust grows, grows, it is hatched. And then the outer layer, outer shell is broken. From within what comes out is, the, is devotion. And devotion is the fragrance of love that flows between the master and the disciple. Trust is also need the outer. Trust is one, someone other than you. Trust is one, someone other than you. And devotion happens when the lamp of God is lit within you. Trust, you trust someone that is outside you. You trust your potentiality. But the devotion is the lamp of God that is now lit within you. Then when the, that is lit, then you are the temple of God and you do not have to go to the temple outside. In devotion, you become the place of worship, not the priest. In devotion, when the devotion has blossomed in you, you become a place of worship, not the priest. Devotion blossoms when you are capable to see the formless hidden behind each form. Devotion blossoms when you can see the formless hidden behind each form. And as long as you remain stuck in the form, only trust can arise, not devotion. Seeing beyond the form means you are no more amidst the waves. Instead, you are in the ocean. The moment you move from waves to the ocean, the spring of devotion spurs from within. Such vision of devotion gives you absolute freedom of life. Devotion says, entire sky is yours. God has given you wings in the form of devotion. Start flying to soul and soar to reach the infinite horizon. Wings of devotion can take you to the sky, just as feet can take you to the temple.